Pacific family, this is Pastor Zoe, and it is another Ignite Chapel experience right here on the campus of Warner Pacific University in the beautiful city and state of Portland, Oregon. I trust all is well with you, and I count it a privilege to be able to spend this time together. Well, on today, I'm talking to our WPU family about this one thing, and it's a very important question that each of us must ask ourselves, and it's this, what is in your hands? You know, a lot of times we're looking for success in big things and, and things that are enormous and, and waiting until something big happens when literally we are closer to victory, we are closer to, the, to a solution than we think. How is that? Well, God gives us everything in seed form and he multiplies those things as we are obedient to him. Well, I don't wanna reteach the message, but I'm excited to share it with you. So come on and join us. It's the Ignite Chapel experience right here on the campus of Warner Pacific University. Let's do it. And a lot of us 
get very frustrated and tired because we're going through the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And it's like, man, I, I know what I want to do, but I don't see it. And I'm here to tell you that you won't see it until you use the access code. You won't see it until you have your face recognition. You won't see it until you put the key in the lock and turn the knob. That's what some of us are missing today. And so what I want you to know is that many times the key to us winning in life actually already resides with us already. Turn to your neighbor and say, what's in your hand? We're going to look at Exodus chapter 4. How many of you remember Moses in the Bible? Yeah, so this is Moses, Exodus chapter 4. We're going to read verses 1 through 5, and we're going to talk about this briefly on today. Because I believe in all of you. I know that success is in your possession already, but you need the access code, you need the key, you need the face recognition, you need the uh, to give authorization to walk into the door of opportunity. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say the Lord did not appear to me? What is this? Well, God assigned Moses to go to the Pharaoh and ask him to what? Let the people what? Let the people go. His people was enslaved for so long and God called Moses to come and to set his people free and to set them free. And so now God has assigned him to do this, but now he doesn't feel like he has the qualifications. He doesn't feel like he has the courage. He doesn't feel like he has the know-how. He doesn't feel like he has the money. He doesn't feel like he has the ability to be able to do this. And when God first came to him, the first thing he gave God was excuses. I stutter. I can't do this. How can I do this? But God already saw something on the inside of Moses that Moses did not see. Moses forgot that even though he was born a slave, he was raised in the palace. He forgot that he was learning the, all the principles of royalty. He forgot that he was raised up in the palace and that he knew the Egyptian culture. He forgot all of these things that would literally aid him in being a success and a savior later on in his life. He forgot that all of that was on the inside of him. When God called him to do an assignment, the first thing he had was an excuse as to why he couldn't do it. And I'm here to tell you, just like Moses, God has placed so much on the inside of you and you have forgotten the value that he's placed in you. You've forgotten the things that you've been through as a child that literally can aid you to where God wants you to be. You've forgotten the lessons in life that your grandmother, your mother, your father, an uncle, an aunt, a pastor has taught you. And you have forgotten that because God has assigned you to do something. But you are afraid to attack it because of your past. And right here, he's saying, well, what if the people don't believe me or listen to me and say the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. And Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. How many of you like snakes? How many of you are afraid of snakes? So a lot of you would have ran from that, right? <laughs> but so he threw it, and it fell to the ground, and, and, and it says right here, Moses threw it to the ground, it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. There's a lot in there that you'll miss if you don't get it. But listen, I'm telling you, you have something in your hands that God has given you. You have something in your possession that God has given you. 
and because of whatever the search situation and circumstances are, you are afraid to do it because of how people think about you or what they'll say and how foolish you look and what if I fail, but forget that God has called you to an assignment, not your neighbor. And I'm asking you today to take ownership, to take authority, to take possession of what God has placed on the inside of you to do. And I want you to take your rod, I want you to take your staff that God has blessed you with and allow God to use it. As the Bible says, he threw it down and it turned into something that he was afraid of. And he ran. What is it that you're afraid of right now? Because the Bible says that Moses threw it down and it turned into something that he was afraid of. Maybe you don't like a season of unfamiliarity. Maybe you don't like that there's no net there to catch me when I step out. Maybe you don't like that I'm the first person in my family to do this, and, and I don't know the repercussions and, and the backbiting and the talking about me. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you're in a position where you're a trailblazer, and you're so afraid to step out on the water, but I'm here to report to you today that God's got you. And Pastor Zoe is not telling you anything that I don't live. Life is going to require faith. And the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That means you're not going to always see your way. That means you are not always going to know what the plan B or plan C or plan D is. That means you are not smart enough to know everything that has to happen in life. And so you have to lean on the unseen. You have to lean because the Bible says that the unseen is more real than what you see. So what am I telling you in essence? You cannot live this life without faith. The Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. That means people that are doing good and people that are doing evil. The rain happens to both. But what is the difference? It's what I have in my possession. And I'm here to tell you, Lord Jesus, when God blesses you with something, he always multiplies it. Some of you might not get what I'm talking about right now, but I am speaking to your spirit. I'm speaking to the real you. And what's going to happen is this going to come back in your remembrance when you most need it. Because guess what happens when you squeeze a toothpaste? What happens? What's inside of it comes out. And I'm trying to put some faith in you right now because when trouble comes your way, when challenges come your way, there is nobody else that can help you but God. And I've mentioned this story before and it bears repeating of my son. He was lying down in the NICU, lost a lot of weight. And the doctors gave up on him and basically told me I need to start planning funeral arrangements. And the first thing I saw inside my mind was a small coffin. And I had to rely on my relationship with God and say it's not over yet. And I rebuke that thought right now. And I'm going to stand on the promises of God. And it ain't over till it's over. And I had to override what I heard from the doctors. And there was something on the inside of me that was stronger than the doctor's report. And I'm going to tell you there has to be something on the inside of you that's stronger than what you're facing right now. Stronger than other people's opinions. Stronger than all these other things. It's very important that you understand that. Because that's the only thing that will keep you in certain situations. And so here is Moses. He threw something down that he was afraid of. And the Bible tells us that he ran from it. And he said, then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And I'm telling you today, reach out your hand. Pick up that thing you're afraid of. Reach out to that person that you're afraid to talk to. Reach out to that opportunity, that internship that you feel like you're not smart enough to do. 
do. You need to reach out and grab it by its tail. And when he did that, miracles happened. When he did that, doors of opportunity opened. When he did that, he was able to be a blessing to the people he was connected to. The trajectory of your life will change when you pick it up. Somebody say pick it up. I promise you. And so he picked it up. And it says, so Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hands. And then the Lord said, this is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. When you are obedient to what God tells you, when you use what he's blessed you with, I'm here to tell you that you will be a light to others. And they're going to ask you, how did you make it? What did you do? And you're going to be able to tell them how good God has been in your life. How he's pulled you through difficult and challenging situations. How he's pulled you through a sickness. How he's pulled you through an injury. How he's pulled you through when you didn't know how he was going to pay for this semester. He pulled you through. Why? Because he has given you something for you to give him. And he's going to multiply and open doors that no man can shut. And he can bless you with things that no man can curse. I'm here to tell you when you trust in God, he will always make sure that you're taken care of. And this is the last verse I'm going to share with you. Matthew chapter 25, verse 29. It says this, For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And I mentioned this earlier, God always multiplies what he gives you because your life is according to his purpose. Somebody say purpose. Now when you're doing your own thing, do it the way you want to do it, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, and you're not being obedient to him, what happens is things start to happen and you are not able to sustain yourself and maintain victory. We're talking about long-term, sustainable Good success is what we're talking about today. We're not talking about, oh, hit and miss. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about consistency on today. If you're wanting consistency in your life, if you're wanting consistent victory in your life, I'm here to tell you this is the access code. This is how it's done. Number one, what is in my hand? What is in my possession already? Many times we look over that because we're looking for some big thing when God has already given you a seed. And that seed, when it's water and has the right sunlight and is in the good ground, what happens? It sprouts and it develops and there's a process and then eventually that seed turns into a fruit. Eventually that seed turns into a tree. But many of us are looking for the tree first. And you're missing your blessing and your door of opportunity because you're looking for something that's bigger, but you already got it. It's in a seed form. And if you let God be Lord over your life, he will allow that seed to germinate and grow. And you will experience consistent, long-term, Good success. I want you to think right now about what is in your hand. And obviously I'm not talking about your physical hands, but I'm talking about your talent, your gift, your ability, something that you're really good at. Think about it. And what will happen instead of jumping on Instagram in the morning and all of those things, if you really focus in on what God's assignment is for your life, what you will begin to discover is that God will literally start downloading information to you about how you can monetize your gifts. You might be an athlete right now and you might be struggling financially or whatever, but hey, if you're really good at what you're doing, maybe you can start a basketball camp. Come on, creative ideas. Maybe if you're good at baking or something like that,
like that. Maybe you can start banking and bringing in extra money. God will download information and ideas to you for you to be able to make it. You don't have to stay where you are. God has put some good stuff on the inside of you, and I'm excited to see. So I guess what Pastor Zoe is asking today, I'm asking that you do not rob us of the gift that God has placed in your life. I'm looking at winners. I'm looking at leaders. I'm looking at eagles. And you have been created to overcome any obstacle that you face. Let's bow our hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and that will be watching this online that have been struggling with our present day circumstances. I ask that you will just shine a light on what they already have in their possession, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that they are smart, they are intelligent, they are full of ingenuity, they are full of creativity in the mighty name of Jesus, that they don't have to wait for someone to tell them something, but they can go and create their own things because you have blessed them with gifts, talents, and abilities to be able to sustain them, and not just them, but everyone they're connected to. I thank you, Lord God, for the, the, the government officials that are in this room. I thank you, Lord God, for the educators that are in this room. I thank you for the medical professionals that are in this room. I thank you for the social workers that are in this room, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, may they never, ever believe a lie. But that they will grab hold to the truth that you have placed a gift in their hands. And if they realize it and they use it correctly, you will multiply it and open doors for them that no man can shut. Whatever's blocking them right now, I curse it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that they will, will flourish, Father, in you. For you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things shall be added. Show them how much you love them, Father God. Show them that they are not a mistake, Father God. Show them, Lord God, that they are bigger than what they think. I thank you, Lord God, for the right connections, the right relationships to help grow the seeds that you've planted on the inside. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, and we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, just know that I love you all so much and if you ever need to talk, I'm available. You can come to my office. You can email me. And just know that something good is going to happen to you. God loves you. Have an outstanding, terrific Tuesday. God bless you.